What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Law Talks and Gaming today, people. Today, I'm going to be going over the I've Got Dino DNA Hassleberry deck profile. Now, this is a very, very fun deck. I like it a lot. I wouldn't be showcasing it if I didn't like it. <laughs> and uh, this skill is kind of cracked. Um, so, this skill does three things, which not a lot of skills, especially coming out of the GX box, does more than one. So this card doing three is really, really good. <laughs> I have no complaints. Um, if you don't know what this skill does, let me go over it for you. Uh, each of your draw phases, you gain 200 life points. All right, that's a really okay, that, that's really decent. During your draw phase, if you draw a dinosaur monster for your normal draw, you can reveal it and place it on the bottom of your deck, then draw one card. So you get to mulligan on one of your dino, dino cards and then draw again. And then lastly, once per turn during your main phase, you can make one dinosaur monster you control gain 200 attack until the end of this turn. So not only are these skills once per turn, they're not all once per duel and you can activate them all in the same turn. Why is this skill not talking about more? Like this skill is so good. And the reason why is because our dino pool isn't the greatest, right? But I think I found a way to make this deck playable. I th think I found a way to make this deck viable. Like, it is definitely fun to play. Definitely very, uh, I want to say very competitively viable. But it's still competitively viable, if that makes sense to you. It's not like going to be your tier 1 deck. But this is going to be a nice rogue contender deck of the format. Um, and so yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into the deck profile. Our first card we're going to go over is Super Ancient Dino Beast. And we're playing this card at 3. This card is just a 2700 beater with 1400 defense points. With the skill, once per turn, it becomes a 2900 attack point monster, which is really good. And you summon it by tributing a face-up dinosaur monster. And then when a dinosaur monster is special summoned from the graveyard, uh, you can draw a card. But we don't do that with this deck. It's literally just here for a 2700 beater. That is a one drop. And because comes 2900 with the skill. Next on our list is a dinosaur that came out in the GX box. This is going to be Black Brachios, which we're playing at 3. This card is a level 4 Earth monster with 1800 attack points, 1100 defense points, and it reads, when this card is normal summon, you can target one monster on the field and change that target to face up defense position. So, yeah, this card is really cool for Zoma. <laughs> if they have a face-up Zoma in attack mode, you summon the Black Brachio, switch it to defense mode, and use one of your weaker monsters to climb it, and you're not taking a hell of a lot of damage, right? This card is very, very good to get out, to out Zoma. It's also good just to out a lot of cards in general, like Spellproof Armor, I'm thinking about like Jinzo right now, and I think like uh, outside of the Ancient Gear monsters, right, um, I think that Colossalus also has less defense points than it does attack. So, yeah, Brachios is just easily able to climb over those cards that usually can't be switched to defense mode due to spellproof, but uh, Brachios can. And it's a very, very good card. Speaking of cards to help you out spellproof, we also play two Hyper Hammerhead. This card says that if a monster that battled with it remains on the field um, and is not destroyed after the battle, this card will return it to hand. So your opponent, right? You attack to the warrior lady while it's in defense mode. You'll take 100 damage, and your opponent either has to banish the hammerhead or return this to their hand and waste their normal summon next turn. So it's a good way to try to, like, you know, get the DD warrior lady to activate. And if they don't let it activate, it's one of those things where you take no repercussion for it, right? You, you're just returning this to hand, and then your hammerhead stays on the field. And then lastly, we have our one of Gillosaurus. Uh, this card is just a monster that can be special summoned. Uh, but when it's special summoned, your opponent has the ability to special summon a monster from their graveyard. So be very careful about that effect. You usually want to use this turn one. Because what you do is you summon the Gillosaurus, tribute it out for the Ancient Dino Beast. And bada bing, bada boom, you have successfully done what you're supposed to do with this deck. Uh, lastly, for the monster lineup, it's not a dinosaur card. It's the best card of the format besides like one other card. It's DD Warrior Lady, right? This card is so good for the format. It's a format-defining card. I think it's in literally everybody's deck except for maybe the Crystal Beast decks that can't play anything but Dragons and Crystal Beasts. And I guess Ancient Gears because, like, not Ancient Gears, but uh, Spellproof Armor because, you know, they're also locked into a specific type. But, uh, yeah, super strong. Highly recommend it. Next on our list is actually going to be Swamp Mirror. Alright, so this is a trap card that I played in the Harpy list I played a while back and the Gaia build I played a while back. And, uh, yeah, it's just a... Uh, Really strong trap card that summons as a monster card. You can summon an attack or defense uh, 
mode and you get to choose its type and its attribute and it's just an 1800 beater and a 1000 defender it's very very good you special summon to your field tribute it for the dino beast there you go lastly on our list or not lastly next on our list is uh floodgate trap hole playing this card too this is just kind of like your main deck out to cyber angels right uh, i think that deck is very powerful this format so not having something in your main deck to like stop them is wrong uh, that's my honest opinion. So Floodgate Trap Hole is actually sitting in the deck as a 2 of. Next on our list is Zoma the Spirit, the best card of the format, right? This card, probably the best card in Speed Duels until it eventually gets hit. Like, you can argue Parasite's better, but Parasite's only better because of Cocoon, right? Zoma the Spirit is, like, insane all alone. Highly recommend playing it. I'm playing at 2 in this deck and not 3. Um, the reason why is because I often play 3 of the Warrior Lady for this build. But you can play 3 of Zoma if you want. Just take out a Warrior Lady or, you know, cut your Brachios into 2 or something like that. And then lastly, we play Night Beam. This is so you can get around the uh, trap cards of this format because Nightmare Wheel is kind of really big right now. Same with, uh, you know, Zomas. <laughs> Just being able to Night Beam it and get around it is very, very good. And then moving on to the side deck. We play Double Cosmic Cyclone. This is for back row heavy decks again. And not only that, it's also for the Parasite. Because this deck is not spell proof. And so they can Parasite your monsters away. So they go activate Parasite. You go Cosmic Cyclone. You banish their monster out of the game. And then they can't use their monster's effect to summon one from hand. And they can't use their effect to shuffle it back into the deck. So yeah, Cosmic Cyclone is really good. Defusion is also in this. This is for the Dragoon matchup and any other fusion matchup you might run into like XYZ. Uh, this card is really, really good for those matchups. Diffusion just completely outs the Dragoon, uh, completely outs the XYZ Dragon Cannon. Like, it's a good card to have, and it's a quick play, so. Mind Crush is the last card we have. This is, again, for Cyber Angels. Very, very powerful deck of the format. So with this and Floodgate Trap Hole, you really should not be losing as long as you draw into one of them and you utilize your card effectively. And then lastly, we have our Waking the Dragon Bluffs. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the showcase. All right, so I did this duel at like 3 o'clock in the morning this morning. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I apologize if I do any like crazy misplays. I don't think I did, but I know I forgot to use the skill, I think, twice. So yeah. Um, I do like how I say if you're playing a real deck, you probably win. And then I started playing this deck and was like, oh yeah, this deck is crazy. Um, so we're playing against a Merrick skill. At first I was like, am I playing against Volcanic Twisted? Because that deck is actually kind of low-key correct. Let me show both. Uh, they set the Nightmare Wheel. I have the Zoma Spirit, Rite of Spirit, and Gravekeeper's Recruiter. We're playing against uh, Shadow Reborn Grave Creep Keepers right now. Setting the um, Recruiter f face down to the field. Um, I use it. It's my... Uh, I've got Dino DNA, right? And then I gain 200... Uh, life points i do not opt to shuffle back to gillosaurus i actually just summon it to the field here tribute it off actually i think i summoned the hyper hammerhead yeah i summoned the hyper hammerhead set my trap monsters and then give my uh, hammerhead 200 extra attack to attack over the dd warrior lady which ends up being a recruiter so recruiter's effect here activates and uh it's going to add gravekeeper's curse to hand this deck was so much better when twisted was uh before twisted was eroded it actually is going to add cannon holder to hand which isn't bad um, and then I'm going to pass turn. They draw for turn, drawing into the curse, which was nice for them. Summoning the curse to the field and inflicting 500 or 800, da yeah, 500 damage to me. And then passing turn. I'm going to swamp mirror on end phase, summoning it to the field, and then draw for turn. Uh, drawing into the night mirror or yeah, to the night beam. I activate the night beam and then I target the zone of the spirit. But they chain nightmare wheel to target the mirror and then chain the zoma to summon it to the field in defense mode, which was smart on their end. That's the way you get around Night Beam's activation, uh, response activation thing. So I tribute the Swamp Mirror because it's a dino and summon Super Engine Dino Beast. Yeah, crazy, right? Use my skill. It goes up 200 attack, making him 2,900. And then I enter into battle phase. I'm going to attack over the Gravekeeper's Curse, dropping him to 1,900. Attack over the Zoma of Spirit with the uh, Gillosaurus, I think. Yep, Gillosaurus. And then I'm going to take the 1,400. That doesn't matter. And then I take the Hyper Hammerhead attack directly into the opponent for 1,500 life points. Opponent moves on into their draw phase, drawing into the right spirit, setting them both face down, and then summoning the cannon holder. 
They use Shadow Reborn here, dropping their life points down to 200, and then summoning Gravekeeper's Curse. This is going to inflict 500 damage to me, and then, uh, yeah, drop me all the way down to 1800 life points. Using the effect of Cannon Holder here, I'm going to take another 700 life points, and then he's going to attack into the Gillisaurus for 1400 direct damage. Or not 1400 direct damage, but, you know, for the Clash. I summon Zomo in the end phase, draw for turn into the Warrior Lady. Uh, use my skill to gain 200 life points, go to standby, go to main 1. I switch the Dino Beast to defense mode and just attack with the Hyper Hammerhead here. Uh, I'm fearing the Wall of Disruption. Do not like that card. If you don't respect it, you will get punished from it. So I lose the 500 life points here, and then I attack into the Curse, right? And then pass turn. Zomo's Spirit is drawn for turn. Uh, I draw for turn, drawing into the Floodgate Trap Hole. I uh, gain 200 life points, set the Floodgate Trap Hole, Battle Phase, and then attack for 1500. But they're going to Zoma the Spirit, which is fine. Uh, I'm in a position where it's not fine, but it's fine. <laughs> drawing into the Nightmare Wheel here, they set it face down, um, and then proceed to pass turn off to me. I draw into another Dino Beast. Uh, I use my skill here to gain 200, go to my main one, um, and then end my turn here. Opponent draws for turn to the Recruiter. They use Nightmare Wheel to uh, chain to the Hammerhead. Using the Nightmare Wheel, I'm going to lose 500 life points. And then they summon the Recruiter and then Rite of Spirit the Cannon Holder. I'm going to Floodgate Trap Hole the Cannon Holder so I do not lose the game. And then, uh, yeah, at this point the opponent loses the game because they Normal Summoned Recruiter in attack position. And I had nothing to stop that. Going on into game two. We got Ancient Dino Beast, Floodgate Trap Hole, Hyper Hammerhead, and Ancient Dino Beast. Starting the game off, they opt to make us go first. Just letting you know, you still get a draw phase in uh, your first turn of the game. So, uh, I've got Dino DNA activates. I gain 200 life points. Crazy. I set uh, Hammerhead, and I set Floodgate, and I pass turn off to the opponent. Opponent draws into a Cannon Holder, sets the Nightmare Wheel and the Zone of the Spirit, and then summons the Gravekeeper's Curse. Curse is going to activate and inflict 500 damage to me. I draw for turn. I gain 200 life points. I set the Swamp Mirror, flip the Hammerhead, and then battle into the Curse. They're going to take their total of 700 damage. I'm going to end phase pass turn to the opponent. Drawing into another Curse here, they summon it. I lose 500. The burn game is on, and I summon Swamp Mirror. I think on end phase. Yep, I draw for turn, drawing into the Night Beam. Gain 200 life points again off my skill. Use the Night Beam here and then target the Zoma, they activate the Nightmare Wheel, they target the Swamp Mirror, they activate the Zoma, <laughs> they summon the Zoma in attack mode, and I do the exact same thing as last time by tributing it for the Dino Beast. Making Dino Beast 2,900 attack points, I attack into the Gravekeeper's Curse, and then my opponent goes down 2,100 life points. Attacking into the Zoma here, I will take the 1,500, and then I will pass turn off to the opponent, who draws into another Zoma. Setting the Gravekeeper's Recruiter face down and the Zoma of the Spirit, I draw a can into another Zoma of the Spirit. I'm going to gain my 200 life points and then proceed to main one. Going to set the Zoma face down, battle phase, attacking into the Recruiter. And then I should have probably put Hyper Hammer Red to 17, but you know, it doesn't matter. They're at 1200 life points. And then attack directly for 1500. But they're going to Zoma, and I have the Floodgate to set the Zoma back face down. And yeah, um, that was ranked, by the way. Uh, so I, this deck performed well in ranked, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, but yeah, the deck is really cool. Uh, being able to gain 200 life points this format actually means a lot versus these, uh, you know, stally like decks with, you know, Nightmare Wheel and Zomas. Um, because like, and like this one, for example, it's a burn deck. Like, because I was gaining that 200 life points the last game, I didn't lose the game because I think last game I only had 700 life points left. And, I, you know, I was gaining life points every single turn. Like, I probably was going to lose that game if I did not have a life point gain skill. Um, but yeah, this deck is really, really cool, really fun. And I liked it a lot. I'm definitely going to be playing around with it a little bit more. If you guys have any ideas for any decks that you are working on right now and you want to see it on the channel, make sure you send me a message on Discord because that's going to be in the description down below. Also, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to post a video tomorrow, so I'm just giving you a heads up on that. Um, the reason why is I have a dentist appointment super early in the morning, and I get home super late at night from work. So, just letting you know that that is going on tomorrow. So, But, other than for that, would you all stay awesome, 
and uh, have a great day. And if I don't see you tomorrow, have a great day tomorrow as well. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.